In today's tutorial, let's do some party wristlets in design by Carrie Clement for Karen Yarns. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on these party wristlets and this is by Carrie Clement for Karen Yarns and this is using Karen Simply Saw Party Yarn. Has a bit of sparkle without the scratch and these are really quite fun. There is a set of white in this Karen Party Yarn as well that I really love to do but because my background is white you'll never see me crocheting it. So I'm going to be using a purple today and of course it's kind of like an 80's inspired kind of idea but you know you dress these up you could actually probably wear these to a wedding if you really wanted to and etc. Very easy pattern. Let's begin to start. You're going to need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and just one ball of Karen Simply Soft yarn. So let me just show you what I'm using today. So just like this and it's really quite fun and you see that it has the word party. So it's got a bit of sparkle without the scratch. Perfect. So let's quickly review the pattern is that we're gonna do some chain work to begin and we're gonna start off and you see that there's only 15 rounds to go. Really quite an easy pattern to do. It's a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and you're gonna need a darning needle just to uh, finish off weaving in your ends. So it's gonna be a quite a fun little idea and I hopefully that you enjoy it and let's begin and grab your yarn and I'm gonna show you a neat twisting, uh, non-twisting technique as well. So let's begin and create a slip knot. So I'm gonna show you a little technique and this prevents the twisting of the chain from happening. So you get no twist it, which is what you want. So starting off with the first one, remember this one never counts as one and you need to chain 30. So what I recommend is that you chain 10 to begin. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So what you want to do is just take this off and insert the bottom so make sure it's not twisted at all and insert the bottom chain onto the hook just like this and then put that other one back on. I want you to leave this toward the back of the hook and therefore you'll never have to worry about it. So then you carry on. So you're gonna go to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 and 30. So once you have your 30 on there right now you want to join with a slip stitch. So just pull through this one and the one that you've already have on the hook and therefore your chain will not have a twist. Let's begin round number one. So let's begin in round number one. We're going to chain two and in this pattern chain two counts as the first half double crochet. Sometimes it doesn't, most times it does but this one it does. So you're gonna chain two that is one half double crochet which is part of that first one and then just moving on to your chain here and you wanna grab two strands here on the top leaving one underneath and it will look nicer and you're just going to half double crochet yourself all the way around. So you're making sure there's two strands always on top and one on the bottom and therefore you'll have a nice perfect edge that you will have with your gloves. So just do one uh, half double crochet around in each one and I'll see you at the end of this revolution. So once you get your 30 in there should be a total of 30 half double crochets around. You're just gonna slip stitch the last one into the first double, uh, half double crochet. Okay so your counts are really important for gloves especially if you want both of them to be the same size. If you don't count and you think it's good um, you could be like me and have a glove that's off <laughs> out of out of sync with each other. So let's begin rounds two through five. So rounds two through five are very simple. You're gonna chain up uh, two and it says working in the back loops only. Okay you're gonna half double crochet in each half double crochet round. So moving to the next one. So if you're new to crochet what happens is that there's two strings. The first one that's closest to you is a front loop and the furthest one is the back loop but together they make a stitch. So you're gonna wrap the hook and you're gonna go into the back loop only and you're going to half double crochet and you're gonna do this for four rounds. Okay so what I want you to do is just half double crochet into the back loops and this is gonna create a ridge that you can see here in the front side. So what I would recommend is just flip this so that you're working on the outside so that you're just kind of moving it around so that the side you're not working on is furthest away from you. It's just easier to see and I want you to half double crochet in the back loop and I'll meet you at the end of this round to make sure that you're uh, knowing how to finish this round off and then you're gonna do the other three for me and I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you get all the way around do not confuse this last one for being a stitch. Okay it looks like it is but it's not. It's leaning over to the first one. So and if you're ever in doubt just count your double or half double crochets and you'll see that there's only 30. So I want you to join it to the top of the beginning half double crochet. 
Okay, so see how I just did that? It looks like it's together. So if I would have put the extra one, it'll look like it's kind of bending like this because it's gaining a stitch. So you're gonna start the next one. So remember we're doing two, three, four, and five. So I just did one with you. So chain up two, one and two, and then coming into the first one, you want to go into the back post again for half double crochet. So please do the re uh, rest of this. So this is gonna be our round number three. Please do four and five exactly the same way and I'll see you at the end of those rounds. Okay, so now I'm done rounds from two all the way to five. So it's a little bit longer. Of course it's for your wrist area here. So let's begin. We're going to do round number six and now we're gonna start creating the mesh look that you can see that the model is wearing or the mannequin is wearing. So we're gonna start off this round by doing um, a chain three. So one, two and three and now it says to skip the next half double crochet and single crochet into the next. So skip the next one and single crochet into the next and we're creating the mesh for the very first time here. So then we begin again. So we chain up three, one, two, three and it says to repeat. So we skip the next half double crochet and go to the next for a single. Okay, so you get it. So one, two, two, just dropped it, two and three. Skip the next one and half double or sorry single crochet into the next. I'll be fine I'm sure. So one, two, three, skip the next one, single into the next. Please do that all the way around but uh, I'll meet you at the end of this round where I have to show you what to do because you don't finish off the same way as you have before. So when you come up all the way back around you're going to chain your three but watch where you started off, remember how you chain three to begin? You have to actually go into the second chain, not to the gap, but second chain in order to keep this pattern looking consistent. And so you're gonna go into the second chain getting two strands and pulling through and through just like that. Okay, it looks a little unusual right now but it'll balance out and you'll see that will work out in all the end. So let's uh, continue rounds from seven all the way to twelve and I'll show you how to get started because now that you've done it right it'll seem like it'll balance perfectly and you'll be very happy. So now that we're here we want to begin and we want to establish then our pattern as we go forward. So we want to continue and we want to chain three just like this and we want to go into the next chain three space over here for a single crochet and then chain three. One, two and three and keep moving around. So into the next chain three space and one, two and three. Next chain three space and you keep doing that all the way around. So one, two and three. One, two, three. One, two and three. One, two and three and you keep going all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of this round and I'll show you what to do, how to finish this round. So when you get all the way around, do you see how it kind of looks unusual right here? That's the starting point again. Okay, so what you're gonna do is that you're gonna continue now to continue in a same revolution. So there's no slip stitching required then at the end of this. Okay, so what we want to do is that we just wanna start another round. So just check that off and I'm gonna check that off as round number seven and then we continue to start again. So one, two and three and come into the next chain three space just like that and continue. So one, two and three. So you're just gonna keep going around and around and just kinda make a note of where the slip stitching is here and then you can uh, keep an eye on your revolutions as you go and check it off your list as you go. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So please do all the way to round number 12. So right now I'm on round number eight. So we do nine, 10, 11 and 12 and I'll see you back here and we'll do a thumb opening at that point. So now I have rounds seven through 12 done and I see the slip stitch here and I have followed it straight up. So this is where I want to be. So now I'm gonna create a thumb hole. So the thumb holes are really quite easy. So let's begin this round here and I'll take you all the way around. So we're going to chain up three, one, two, three and we're going to single crochet into the next chain three space like so and it says to do that twice. So one, two, three and then single into the next one. It now says to chain four. So one, two, three and four. Skip the next chain three space here and go to the next one after that and then single crochet. Here is your thumb hole right there. Okay, it's an extra big spot. So now you continue the rest of the round the same way. So chain three and then go into the next space. So it's just what you already know. So one, two, three, next space and go all the way around doing this. So this has created that thumb 
hole for you. So let's uh, meet you back here and I'll show you how to do rounds 14 and 15. So I'm all the way back around and here I can see the thumb hole right here. So I just let you know where I am, okay? So now we're gonna finish off rounds number 14 and 15 the same way that you know. So remember how we were doing chain three and then going into the next space? Well this chain four we just have to use that the same way. So we're gonna chain three and keep moving to the next space with a single chain three, move to the next space, chain three, okay? And look, this is your thumb hole right here. So you're just gonna go right into the space as normal and then chain three and then move to the next space after that. So it's just what you know, we've just created an extra larger opening here for your thumb when it pops out. So continue around and I want you to continue this round and the round 15 just the same way that you know how and then we're gonna finish this off with the darning needle. So this is it for this pattern as well. So just continue this round and one more round and then that's it. So in the final round that you come around, you have to stop. See this is where the hole is here and if you pull it apart you can see it. It's a lot bigger. And so in the final round you have to stop just right close to that spot. So one, two, three. Doesn't matter if you're doing right or left. Um, it, it's still the same spot. So just look and just kind of follow it up. Okay, so here's the hole there. This is it. I'm done. So there's my hole. So what I want to do is take this and I want to trim my work enough that I can use a darning needle with it and I want to pull this through. Okay, so you need to use a darning needle at this point to weave in these ends because you are gonna be using these. Um, you don't want these coming out. So if you just feed it onto a darning needle and if you go and glide in your work just underneath the stitches Okay, just go back and forth three times. So just going in, one, two, and three. And you're out. Okay, so now that it's in three times, you can safely cut that right down. It will never fall out on you. So just cut that down. I need you to go back to the cuff area. On the other side, you have your strand there. And I want you to put that into a darning needle. And again the same concept. So just going in underneath the stitches. Try not going on the outside of it to impede on the look of the of the way it looks. Like the stitch work. So just going in and because it's tied in a knot on when you're started because it's called a slip knot you can go in twice if you want to and that should never fall out on you as well. So there you go. So that's how you complete a pair of these uh, party wristlets and so now you can just uh, safely try it on. Okay, so there just put your thumb into position just like so. So there you go just like this and it's left or right. So these are just very meshy, really fun. So you can just uh, try them on in the other way as well. So this is how you do this and this is a really neat pattern and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you. Bye-bye.